So it is time for another differential equation battle. y double prime plus 2y equals t plus sine t versus y double prime plus 2y equals t times sine t. So you can pause the video now and try each of these first, then come back and see the rest of the video to learn the solution. We'll start out with y double prime plus 2y equals t plus sine t. Now we know that when we're doing undetermined coefficients, if we have two things added on the right side of the equation, we're going to add together the guesses. So when we look at the particular solution for y, the guess we're going to make for t will be a t plus b. And then the guess we make for sine of t will add on c cosine t plus b sine t. Now we can differentiate this twice and plug it into our equation. So it's time to plug all of this into our equation. y double prime is going to be what we have right here, negative c cosine t minus d sine t. And then for the 2y, we'll have plus 2 times a t plus b, and then plus c cosine t plus d sine t. And all of this is equal to t plus sine t over here. So we've just plugged in our y particular, and then we want to expand all of this out. So this part over here is going to turn into 2a t plus 2b. And then we'll take a look at the cosines and sines. Notice we have 2c cosine t minus c cosine t. So that'll just give us a 1c cosine t. Then we have 2d sine t minus d sine t will again be just plus d sine t. That equals t plus sine t. So let's see what we need here. First of all, let's take a look at the t's. We have 2at equals t, or in other words, 2a must equal 1 which means we know that a must equal 1 half. So that's our first piece of information. Now if we take a look at the constants, notice on the left side 2b is our only constant, and then on the right side we have nothing over here. So we have 2b equals 0, therefore b must equal 0. Now, the last thing we have to look at is the cosines and sines. We have that c cosine t equals, well there are no cosines over here either, so c must equal 0. And then last but not least, looking at the d's. d sine t equals sine t. Well obviously d must equal 1 for that to work. And now we figured out all the coefficients for our particular solution. So I'll plug these in, clear the board, and we'll get to work on the complementary part. So I've cleared the board and plugged in our constants a equals 1 half and d equals 1. Remember, b and c were 0, so those parts just disappear. We have our particular solution. Now it's time to work on the complementary solution, which means we set y double prime plus 2y equal to 0. We know this means we want y to equal e to the rt. So if we plug this in, we get r squared plus 2 equals 0. Well, this is a quadratic equation. If we solve this, we'll get that r equals plus or minus i times the square root of 2. You can watch my video on complex roots in the description, but remember we're not going to write our solution in the form e to the i t. Instead, we're going to use Euler's identity to write the complementary solution as c1 cosine of root 2 t, and then plus c2 sine of root 2 t, just like that. So with that, we have finished the particular solution and the complementary solution with those complex roots. So it's time to write down our final answer, y. That's going to be the particular solution plus the complementary solution. So we get 1 half t plus sine t, and then plus c1 cosine root 2t plus c2 sine of root 2t. There we go. So that is the solution to our first differential equation here. It's time to get cracking on this second one. So we have a clear board, and it's time to look at y double prime plus 2y equals t times sine t. Remember with undetermined coefficients, when we added two things on the right side of the equation, we added together the guesses. Similarly, when we multiply two things on the right side of the equation, we're going to multiply the guesses. So let's take a look at what our particular solution will look like. Our guess for t is going to be k1t plus k2. And then our guess for the sine of t will be k3 cosine t 
plus k for sine t. Now, if we expanded this out, notice that we would get k1, k3, k2, k3, k1, k4, and k2, k4. We would get four different constants. So what I'm going to do is instead of leaving it in terms of these k's, we're going to have some new constants. I'm going to write this particular solution as at plus b cosine t plus ct plus d sine t. So if you want, you can expand out this expression on the top here, and then notice that this k1, k3, k1, k4, whatever, we can turn into these four letters right here. So this is what we're going to look at as our particular solution. I'm going to take the derivatives of these, and then we'll get started working on our coefficients. So I've taken our two derivatives here. We won't be needing the yp prime, but we will have the double prime in our equation. I'm going to step out of frame for a little bit so we have space to write everything in. First, we'll start out looking at y double prime. If we plug in this yp double prime that we have here, that's going to give us negative at minus b plus 2c cosine t, and then plus negative ct minus d minus 2a sine t. Now we want to look at plus 2y. So that'll be plus 2 times, and then yp will be at plus b cosine t plus ct plus d sine t. And we know all of that is going to equal t sine t. But first, let's just expand everything out that we have right here. To start out, notice we have 2at minus at. So that'll give us just a positive at. And then take a look at the constants. We have plus 2b minus b. Well, that will be a plus b. And then we have another plus 2c on the top, cosine t. Now we take a look at the signs. So we have plus 2ct minus ct. That's going to be a plus ct. Plus 2d minus d plus d. And then we have a minus 2a as well, sine t. And that equals t sine t. So now we can start looking at which things we need to set to 0. To start out, let's take a look at at cosine t. Notice that at cosine t must equal 0 because we don't have any t cosine t on the right side of the equation. Well, the only way that'll be true is if a is equal to 0. So that's our first piece of information here. Next, let's take a look at ct sine t. That's the only part with a t sine t in it. We have 1t sine t on the right side of the equation. So in order for this to work, ct sine t must equal 1 sine t, or in other words, c must equal 1. That's our next piece of information. Now we'll look at the constant parts next to the cosine. We have b plus 2c cosine t, but over here, there are no cosines. So we know b plus 2c must equal 0. We also have that c equals 1. So b plus 2 equals 0, and therefore we know b equals negative 2. There's only one more thing to figure out, which is the value of d. So if we take a look at the constants over here, we have d minus 2a sine t. But there's no constant sine t function on the right. So this must equal 0. We also know that a is 0. So this goes away, and we just have d equals 0 as our equation. Of course, we can write that down as our final piece of information. So we have all of the constants that we need to plug into our particular solution right here. So I'll plug all this information in and clear the board so we can get working on the complementary part. So I've cleared the board and plugged in our values for b and c. Remember that a and d were 0, so we could ignore those parts. This is our particular solution. But notice we don't actually need to do any more work to get our complementary solution, because this y double prime plus 2y is the same thing that we have over here. So our complementary solution, when we set it equal to 0, will be the same. In other words, it's going to be c1 cosine of root 2t plus c2 sine of root 2t. And therefore, our final answer y is very simple. We just add these up. So negative 2 cosine t plus t sine t plus c1 cosine of root 2t plus c2 sine of root 2t. That is our final answer. So when we're looking at undetermined coefficients, remember, we add the parts, we add the guesses. 
If we multiply the parts, we multiply the guesses. So that is our solution.